Sometimes you have a lot of potentiometers but don't have the exact value. Well, that's a kind of common problem when you are working with electronics, especially when you are really working with electronics and then I mean do experiments. And this video is all about that. And in this video I want to test whether you can use a 10k uh, potentiometer as a 5k potentiometer. Well, there's a lot to tell about that. Uh, the first idea could be, well, bridge both electrodes of the potentiometer with a resistor that mimics the value of that potentiometer. Say, this is a 10k potentiometer and you solder here between these two electrodes a 10k fixed value resistor could be that this potentiometer will act as a 5 K potentiometer, so a 5000 ohm poten potentiometer. Is that true? Yes, in a certain way it's true. But in other ways uh, there could be many problems. So here is the say kind of drawing that I made about this problem. First good advice is to use an analog meter, not a digital meter, to this test circuit. Pen over somewhat. And of course we have in electronics the so called linear and logarithmic potentiometers. Uh, you can surely find more information about that on the World Wide Web or other electronics sites. Uh, this is kind, in a kind of way how a potentiometer acts in a linear way here. Uh, the voltage changes in a linear way when you turn the knob of such a potentiometer, be it this one or whatever other potentiometer. Could be a trimmer, etc. etc. And when it acts in a logarithmic way, of course when you know something of uh, mathematics, I don't know much about mathematics, but anyway I understand how logarithmic values work, uh, they often have to do in electronics with audio circuits. So this is the kind of way a logarithmic signal uh, builds up. In many cases potentiometers are made uh, for audio circuits, audio amplifiers, audio pre-amplifiers and in that case they work in many cases at least in a logarithmic way and sometimes they even have some taps so there's sometimes here a tap anyway uh, such a tap can be used to make such a simple potentiometer more logarithmic has everything to do with say filter circuits uh, amplifying the bass frequencies etc. So that's not the issue here and this is only say first demo kind of demo about the properties of such an adaptation and then I mean when you solder here between these two electrodes this is a wiper and this is ground of course that can also be reversed and this is the say upper electrode and the lower electrode of the potentiometer and you can solder both here a resistor between these two electrodes and between the wiper and ground and that's what I've done now. Say the aim and the idea was to change the 10k potentiometer into a 5k potentiometer. Does it work? Well let's see. 
Now I've used this 8K2 resistor, fixed value resistor, that bridges between the wiper and ground, say ground. And let's see how such a potentiometer acts when I turn here the knob. Now we are here on approximately 5K, so the scale is multiplied by 100, so 50 multiplied by 100 is 5000, and the resistor, <coughs> the resistor is 8K2. From the wiper to ground. Let's see what happens when I turn the knob. And it's important to see what I'm doing now. I'm turning that knob very slightly down. That means that, that on the carbon layer of the potentiometer here, the resistance changes. And now I turn it up very slightly. This is uh, 1 multiplied by 100 is 100 ohms, 200 ohms. Slight higher position on the axis, on the knob, 300 ohms, 400 ohms, 500 ohms, 1K. 10 multiplied by 100 is 1K, etc, uh, etc. Et so, what I want to show is this, is that you can study how the potentiometer acts in a certain way. Is this linear or is this not linear? Uh, it matters sometimes and sometimes it does not matter anyway. Uh, by the way, uh, linear potentiometers are <coughs> more often used in measurement circuits and non-linear potentiometers, logarithmic potentiometers in audio circuits. So, uh, well, this was one demo and we can, by, by using that uh, resistor here, that resistor of 8K2, we can go to approximately, say, 4700 ohms. Put the camera down for a while and uh, now want to connect the other uh, resistor, experimental resistor, and that's a resistor of 12K. So what happens when we solder here between the wiper and the ground a resistor of 12K and again turn the knob of that potentiometer. Well, we are now on a resistance value of more than uh, 5000 ohms. You can see it here. I think it's 6000 ohms turning the, the, the axis. This is, by the way, a kind of very strange effect here. Anyway, uh, Turning the axis back, we are on 4000 ohms. And again here, perhaps it's interesting to show what really happen, what's really happening when I turn the knob. Uh, 3000, 2000, 1000 ohms, 500 ohms, 400, 300, 200, 100 ohms, etc. So, I think that in certain applications with these resistors, with both of these resistors, you can get good results. Furthermore, do experiments. That's the most important thing that I can say uh, when you use for when you want to use, for instance, uh, a 10k potentiometer as a 5k potentiometer or a 100k potentiometer as a 50k potentiometer or a thousand ohms to 500 ohms etc etc with a certain fixed value parallel resistor. I'm not talking by the way about this situation here when you bridge the uh, the potentiometer 
with an equal value of that potentiometer say uh, here 10k potentiometer and here a 10k fixed value resistor you could say uh, perhaps that now it is a, a 5000 ohm uh, potentiometer but perhaps that's true perhaps it's usable and what is the but what will be the effect on its logarithmic and linear and or linear properties I cannot predict that you have to study that with an analog meter in a test situation when you use such a potentiometer etc etc that's very important this test and it will also show how such an electronic circuit will uh, react when you say change the volume here or change the frequency you can change a vo the volume of an audio signal here with that potentiometer setup you can change the frequency uh, of an oscillator with such a setup uh, you can change say a measurement current and in all cases it's important to study the practical situation how will the potentiometer react when you turn the knob anyway uh, there are say a kind of uh, more or less common ideas does the linear or logarithmic property of the potentiometer matter yes uh, when you solder uh, a resistor parallel to a linear uh, potentiometer in general that's my id at least i have to test it uh, it doesn't it does not get more linear perhaps it can get somewhat more linear on certain parts of the carbon layer but not say in general it will have say more or less that's my id i have to test it the same properties but um, a logarithmic potentiometer that's what i wanted to tell here a logarithmic potentiometer will get somewhat more linear when you solder a parallel resistor over it or from the wiper here from the wiper to ground or here that's my idea thanks for watching i've used this sometimes in my practice electronics practice during the past 40 years uh, not always say uh, the, the easiest solution is to use the potentiometer that's indicated in a certain schematic but when you're doing experiments you can get very good results by using this method thanks for watching